Austin Tech Connect is the official podcast of the Austin Technology Council. Founded in 1992, ATC exists to help unite the local technology ecosystem and to encourage the spread of community, collaboration, and conversations in Central Texas. This podcast is sponsored by SailPoint. They are a leading provider of identity security for the modern enterprise, empowering organizations worldwide to put identity security at the core of their business. With a foundation of artificial intelligence and machine learning, SailPoint Identity Security delivers the right access to the right identities and resources at the right time. Now, here is this week's episode. Hey there, and welcome to another episode of Austin Tech Connect. This is the official podcast of the Austin Technology Council. Every single week, we bring to this show interviews with local leaders who are doing really interesting things that are impacting our tech companies. Now, oftentimes, we talk to those tech CEOs themselves, but today, we're branching out a little bit, and we're talking to a fast-growing Austin-based company that is not in the tech sector, but that serves our tech companies directly and indirectly. We are joined today by Mark Tucci, and Mark is the CEO of Austin Sports and Social Club. Hey, Mark, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Zom. So for those of you who don't know Mark, and all full disclosure, Mark is a good friend of mine. The company that he started and runs is all about playing sports, getting outside, and having fun. He has leagues for both adults and for kids, and they specialize in doing corporate events, both putting on tournaments for companies as well as having field days so that you can get your people out of the office into the fresh air so they can have some fun and interact with one another. Their sort of motto is team events that are all co-ed, all skill levels, and all social, because we want to get outside and have fun. Mark grew up in Baltimore, went to college in the Baltimore area, and he moved here 19 years ago with the intent of launching this company. And the growth that he has seen from before the pandemic until now has been amazing. We'll talk a little bit about what happened during the pandemic, because it wasn't quite as amazing, but the growth that the company has seen in the last two years is epic. And he has expanded beyond Austin and has operations in Dallas, Fort Worth, San Antonio, and Minneapolis. So, Mark, let's back up here a step. You said you moved to Austin to start this company. Why not start it in Baltimore? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, I believe that uh, I took one trip down here uh, and realized that this is where young professionals want to be. No one really was here at the time. This is 2005. Uh, you either went to UT and stayed around or you might be one of those who grew up in this area. Uh, and that was really it. Uh, population obviously less than half of what it was today, but it just right away screamed as this is the city that uh, needs something like this. Um, a lot of other major metropolitan areas had something similar. Uh, Austin did not, and also gave the ability to expand out to other Texas cities, uh, which we took advantage of later. Uh, most importantly, it wasn't, there's no winter that, that we're gonna have to worry about. We're outside playing sports 12 months a year. Can't say that so much on the East Coast. Right. No, that that that's very true. Plus, the amazing growth that we've had over the past 19 or 20 years in the tech sector, bringing so many young people really fits right into the demographic of, of what you serve. So on your let's talk about your public leagues for adults and for kids. Who do you serve in, in that in that demographic? Our adult leagues are for anybody 21 and up. And this really doesn't mean there's something you cannot play We have every sport. There's 12 different ones to be exact. Uh, that whether you played in high school or you haven't played since you were five or you never played, uh, this is the kind of home for you. This is something that wasn't, wouldn't it be cool if we went out and did this? If you're the college athlete or you're looking for the highly competitive place, this might not be your space. Sure, there are sport leagues, sports leagues everywhere that might fit for you, but really want the, what we call the social athlete. Somebody who's out there for fun first or beer first and game competition second. So, who cares what the scores are? Are there going to be leagues and standings and schedules? Yes, we do all of that. But at the end of the day, we're we're trying to win fifty dollars of beer money more than and bragging rights. There's really nothing else to it aside from just going out there and having a good time. And the kids' leagues? The kids' leagues have been great. It's we've realized that the adults are based on a social atmosphere, and we do the same thing for kids because today's youth environment is all about stressing elite play and competition at a very young age and specialization when kids are as young as six, seven years old. Um, it's caused a lot of problems. It causes burnout. It causes injuries. And a lot of kids cut into those middle high school years 
with now nothing left because they didn't play anything else growing up and they are lost going into those uh, very big schools without really something to fall back on. Uh, our job is to give them opportunities to play at a recreational level, which is pretty much a practice once, play once is kind of the motto of the league. And if you something else that you really love and are good at, great. Go out and do that as much as you want, but you still have another sport to be able to lie back on and be able to really enjoy both and be able to be with your friends and really have a good time where score and standings are not the emphasis. So you mentioned that you have 12 sports in your adult leagues and, you know, a big emphasis that you make is, hey, you don't have to be a great athlete. You don't even have to be really outdoorsy and athletic. What are some of these 12 sports and, and what are some of the ones that are more for the people who aren't great athletes? Uh, sand volleyball comes up as a favorite uh, because you can play it pretty much uh, in so many places throughout the city. Uh, stop by Zilker Park sometime and we're running leagues there three, four nights a week. Uh, and the level of play is not very high, to put it kindly. Uh, this is really going out and saying, wouldn't it be cool if type of a thing? Haven't played before. Pick up my friends. Let's go out and do it. Um, there might not be a bump set and spike every time. Actually, there might be a bump set and spike, not a single time in a match. Uh, <laughs> there's kind of everything out there. And that's kind of what we want as our place in the market is that every day, um, I call them, you know, uh, I still call them athletes, uh, but really adults looking to go out there and have fun. Uh, but that sport really rises to the top because it is the most popular sport that we offer and is the, uh, again, one of the fastest growing sports, uh, in this country. And it doesn't mean, matter if you played any kind of volleyball as a child. Uh, being able to start as an adult can totally work well, and you could pick it up in, in no time at all. Uh, the other sport, which is the fastest growing sport in the country right now, is pickleball. Uh, there you got a sport that everybody sees. This is kind of looks like tennis. Well, it's actually more like ping pong than anything else. And does that take a lot of skill to play? Not really. You can go there once or twice and probably figure it out quite easily, even if that is not, the you know, you're not the most agile person. You don't really need to cover a lot of territory, but you will actually get a great workout, surprisingly. Uh, and it's a lot of fun to play. So those being the um, the two bit most uh, growing sports. Um, but you going back to the core, uh, kickball has been just a, a home run for uh, two decades now. Um, talk about a sport where you really need no experience because, <laughs> you know what, if you played kickball growing up and you say you were good at it outside of playground elementary school days, well, then maybe I need to hear more about the league that you were in. Um, but this is really all about something that no one has a real differential advantage. Unlike other sports like softball and basketball, where somebody might have played it for 18 years. This is something that really everybody is going up there for the first time, whether you kick the ball a mile or bun it down the third baseline. It's really all about, you know, running the bases, grabbing a beer and having fun with your friends. Nice. And a couple of the other sports, we don't have to cover all 12, but what are, what are a couple of the more uh, random ones? Uh, <laughs> we've done pretty much everything. So, um, cornhole, uh, certainly people think of that as just a, a backyard sport. Uh, well, turn on ESPN too, and that's, uh, televised more than you'd even imagine. Um, so that has been a really fun, uh, recreational sport that we do as well. Uh, flag football, uh, indoor volleyball, um, soccer is, a, obviously a, a very, very big sport for, uh, kids and adults alike. Um, and those have really been the main ones. And obviously I think basketball I might've mentioned before as well. Um, so it's all of your traditional sports that you played growing up, whether it be in the backyard, on the playground, or actually in the league, uh, combined with some of the more fun ones that uh, everybody might have just played at recess. So I know before the pandemic, you had about 25,000 people participating in your leagues annually here. You know, Is that the Austin area? Is that company-wide? Uh, we had 25,000 in Austin alone. Okay. And now you're looking at 40,000 playing annually in, in the Austin area. And obviously during the pandemic, and I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about that in a second, uh, things slowed down uh, considerably. However, what do you expect, what do you describe as the reason why you go from 25,000 to coming out of the pandemic to now 40,000 people participating in your leagues? Uh, I really feel the whole work from home um, movement uh, made people realize in a very quick amount of time, they need human interaction and need to be in front of other adults and in, in a social environment. Uh, to have just a conversation about life, sports, whatever it might be. Uh, we weren't getting that over Zoom. Uh, and the ability to just go out and connect, it didn't really matter what it was or how good you were. It's just, let's go out and have fun. And that really is why I think people were looking at it. Uh, you know, our mission is to be the best part of our customer's day. And it was more important then uh, that we provided that opportunity so somebody had something to look forward to. They may not like their job. They may not like their situation they were in with the job. That, you know what, but tonight's going to be fun and they're going to be able to go out and uh, have a great time. 
So it's interesting because with most of your, you know, demographic being people in their early 20s through their early 30s, you know, I believe probably a huge percentage of the people who participate in your leagues are coming out of the tech companies that are here in Austin or they're totally virtual workers working for tech companies who've chosen to live in Austin. Do you have any any uh, uh, studies of how much of your league is made up of tech people? It's It's got to be a lot. It is a lot, and it's actually a growing percentage is the best way I can put it because of all of the tech growth in Austin. Uh, people are finding uh, Austin Sports Social Club first as a way to see where where do I want to live or where, where do I want to play uh, before then finding apartments. And that's a really cool thing is that we've gotten that reputation of being like, this is what I'm going to do after work. And because we're all over the city in the metro area, there's kind of a location that is near almost everyone, but they're thinking about that first as in, this is where I want to, you know, make sure that I have my network or really build a network because I might not have the ability to do that through my workforce. And that's been a, a really cool thing of seeing all these individuals who are coming to Austin, joining us first and, you know, hopefully being able to branch out from there. So for everybody listening, you know, most of my listeners work in our tech community people who you work with. If you've never heard of Austin Sports and Social Club, your coworkers are probably in that mix of 40,000 local people who are playing. And so you probably should be aware, especially if people are working remotely and they need something to do, you should probably be telling them about Mark's organization. So Mark, I want to switch gears now to the corporate events that you do, your field days and your tournaments that you do for companies locally. And a huge percentage of that are the local tech companies who want to engage their people. They want to have a chance for the people to do more than just work together. But I believe, and every study shows, that when people have friends at work and they share experiences, they like their jobs more, they stay longer, and they're more satisfied every day uh, in, in their work work life. And you know, that's what we all want. We want people who work harder, stay longer, and are more satisfied. So what are the companies doing? Why are they finding you to do outings? Why are they finding you to do tournaments or, or field days? And then what is a field day? <laughs> uh, so to answer the first part of that question, uh, I think it really comes back to the lack of the need of corporate culture. Uh, it's been a big buzzword in the industry forever, how important it is to take care of our employees. But uh, in a hybrid or even work from home environment, uh, it's even harder than it was before. Uh, there was a, once upon a time where we all sat in the office and we pushed the beer cart through on a Friday afternoon because companies just wanted to stay at their desks and keep working and go even later. And that was OK um, with today's uh, consumer. Not so much. Uh, people are more apt to move around, uh, take advantage of opportunities that uh, didn't exist before. So having a strong culture uh, is more important than ever. And uh, after a couple of years of not being able to you know, do things that companies have been doing for, for years, it was, oh my gosh, we got to figure something else out. And this has kind of been a, uh, a big uh, you know, boost for us is because there's traditional things that we do. We run sports leagues. So if you want to come out and play a sport in a single day, we'll run a tournament just for your company. We do kickball tournaments, cornhole tournaments, pickleball tournaments. We do these all the time. And they're great. The only thing is the person playing the sport's got to be comfortable being on that field. Uh, and this is where it comes back to um, the field day. So it, you think of field day, the first thing that comes to most people's minds is third grade. What did I do? Go do outside on that, on that day when we're all out there drinking sodas and getting blue ribbons and, and, and trying to compete with each other. Yeah, that, that's exactly what it is. It is the same concept, but the games have changed just a little bit. So if you want to do the traditional things, we can do the, we do those as well. Uh, but we also do half of our games, which we call more of our inclusive games. Uh, because everybody doesn't want to run or jump or move, quite frankly. Uh, they might not have the right footwear. They might not just care to move, period. Uh, but you know what? They should be able to get that their energy just as high trying to win a game of uh, Speed Giant Jenga or a jumbo <laughs> puzzle relay with a whole team that you wouldn't believe how competitive things could be when you're sitting just at a, you know, a single six-foot table in front of you. But they're great. They're great. But you know what? The classics are awesome, too. We've got our version of the hippity hop, which is really fun. And, uh, you know, there you have your, uh, you know, sack races, which are also really cool. But instead of a traditional sack race, you're thinking, OK, well, we had to go from point A to point B. Uh, we try to add something a little more fun to them. So, for example, in this one, you got to get the first person on the team gets in the sack and they've got to go down to the end. But instead of turning around and coming back, they've got to think of a connect four piece and put it in a giant connect four board. And you're racing another team. So the first one to get connect forward is going to go out and win. So there's a little more incentive in a kind of uh, a more adult way that really makes it uh, in interesting and uh, really adds a level of um, uh, not just competition, but just humor to the overall event. 
And uh, the people still fall and stumble and laugh. Absolutely. Uh, but it really makes it a blast. But you know what? If everyone on the team doesn't want to play that specific event, no problem. One person goes twice. One person may not just pit that at all. They're the one who's going to be on that speed giant Jenga. First, first one to go. So it makes it really fun in that regards because there really is something for everybody, no matter what your ability level is, to go out and have fun and really feel part of your team and be more connected to your company. So what size does it, are like larger companies doing more tournaments and smaller companies maybe doing more field days or does it matter? What, what, what size tech companies are, are taking advantage of these opportunities? We've done field days for anywhere from 50 to 500 people. Wow. And so it really is everything. If you've got a small team, well, you know what? We're going to be in and out in 90 minutes and we're going to have a blast and you're going to get on with whatever else you want to do. If it's a little bit bigger, we could pretty much make it as long as you want. But the thing with companies is that, that they may not realize is they, your employees don't want to be out there all day. And our job is to make it efficient for them. We want to get people moving and going because, well, one, it is sometimes hot in Austin, Texas, and you don't want to be sitting outside all day. Uh, but two, that's just more of the, you know, that, that's the engaging part is like, we're going from one event to the next and we're always keeping people on the go and they can, you know, we can keep standings. We can do ribbons. We can do medals. You can do any kind of incentive that you want. We've seen it all, you know, a trophy to drink out of in the end. Great. They're all fun. Uh, most importantly, people can be able to keep going. Uh, they'll, they'll really have a, a, a buy-in to, wow, that event really was cool. Uh, we should do that again. So when, when we're looking at these events, are they taking place like in a local park, in Zilker Park? Are they taking place in the parking lot of the company? Where, where are these field days and these tournaments happening? That's a great question. It's actually both. Um, we have uh, access to plenty of fields uh, that are main, grass is always ideal, but we've done them in parking lots all the time. Uh, and we've done them also on site at companies' campuses who just want to, hey, we want to just come downstairs at five o'clock and have this already ready for us. That certainly works as well. We've, we've done them inside of, uh, conference rooms at hotels. Uh, it's really wherever space that you have available, we'll make it work. If you have something above a 10 foot ceiling kind of helps out sometimes, but even not always necessary. So we can pretty much make any space work. Uh, and again, grass always preferred. And if you don't have a space of your own, we'll help you find one, but we certainly encourage you to use whatever you have around you. If you, if you want to use the, what's, what's nearby. Nice. So what's been the biggest change? I mean, your business, the way it started, it was a B2C business, right? You're, you're selling to, to Bob and John and Mary and Kathy who after work want to go play in an open sports league and they're joining, they're either joining as a team or they're joining as an individual and being assigned a team. And then after the game, they might be going to a bar and having a few drinks. Yay. That's their individual choice. What's the biggest change going from B2C to having an arm of your company that's a fast growing part of your company that is now a B2B company? What's the difference from the the back end for Austin Sports, Sports and Social Club selling to companies? Uh, the, <laughs> the big difference is that uh, for B2C, one person makes a decision. For B2B, there's too many heads in the room sometimes. And it's like, we know we've got to do something, but we don't know what it is. And we might have a culture committee who's here for this year. Uh, or, you know what, I'm going to get all the information I bring to this person. This person's not a sporty person, so they may not see it, or they might be a little more uh, not in our demographic uh, from what they're used to our company being able to do, and it may not appeal to them. Uh, the truth is it actually appeals to everyone, and there is really no age maximum. I think it's a sport pickleball is proving that because it came from a 55 and over community <laughs> where it absolutely dominated to now the younger generation. They're, well, taking, they're of- taking it over, and, and the old people, we're, we're getting mad. They're taking pickleball. They're stealing pickleball from all of us over 55. It's uh, it, it really is making it, uh, which is actually cool that that sport's done this, is that the 25-year-old can play with a 55-year-old, and actually both of them will have a good time. Um, that's kind of what these companies have because your, your customer or your employee base might be half 25 year olds and half 55 year olds. There's always going to be mixed. How do you make all of them happy? Well, playing in one sport might be a little bit hard, which comes back to why these field days are really, uh, really great for companies because it just gives everybody the chance to do one thing and they all can find their place in it and be like, that was fun. Well, as an entrepreneur who's been running your own business for, for 19 years, and I think I've known you six or seven years, something like that, seven years. I've watched you just in the last seven years go from being from someone who really worked in their business, as they say, to somebody who really works on their business. So your business has grown a lot and your role as the leader of the company has changed. And and obviously you've had to grow a lot as you've grown the team, grown to 40,000 people participating in the league. So you have to have more people locally and you've expanded now to four other markets What are some of the biggest changes you've seen as a business leader as you've gone from working in the business and and refereeing and running the leagues yourself to now working on the business? 
uh, making sure you have the right people around you uh, is by far the most important thing for us. Uh, I'm not the one who's calling balls and strikes at home plate, but if I do a bad job or I don't move or I'm on my phone not doing it, you're going to have a bad experience and you're not going to come back and play with us again. But that's three levels removed from where I am. So if you can surround yourself with employees, one who the same passion as you uh, and care, well, then you know what? Your field contractors will kind of be the same way. They'll make sure they, they, they follow the examples that are led by everybody else. So uh, it really is if a company is trying to create culture, so are we. If our mission is to be the best part of our customer's day, well, everybody's got to be smiling, greeting, and assisting the customers. And if we can do that, I could pretty much make sure whether my outer safe call might have been a little bit wrong, yet you'll be more okay with me because you know who I am as an individual uh, versus just being that the umpire out there who screwed up my game. And a lot of the tech leaders who are listening face the same problems with, with the, what you just described. And especially as you open more and more locations, you know, you're already in four other cities. I predict you'll be in 10 other cities pretty soon. So what are some of the things of, you know, that, that every company as they grow and then have remote people, what are some of the other struggles that you have? Uh, well, well, one is the same thing that we're doing right here is how do you touch everybody? How do you be in front of them? You know, we get our team together as often as we can, but that's not always logistically possible. Uh, you know, what can you do aside from, you know, physically being there? Um, those things will be tough as every company scales. Uh, but most importantly, it's doing things outside of just uh, their time spent in front of the computer. Uh, what else can we do to be able to make that person really feel connected to our mission and what we do? So I kind of skipped over it, but we talked a little bit about the pandemic. And, and while for a lot of companies, especially a lot of the tech companies, people just moved home, had their computers, used Zoom, and business continued as close to as you know usual as possible. You know, I, most people who listen know I was a professional speaker for live corporate events. Live corporate events stopped and my business went to almost zero. Uh, what did What was it like for somebody who was running sports leagues and doing, you know, some of these corporate events? when nobody could be, be together. What was the pandemic like for you as a leader? Uh, I'll, I'll sum it up by just saying the word challenging. Uh, the things were, were very hard when being together was not okay. Uh, everything that we do involves human interaction. So it's not about even giving a high five after you cross home plate. It's even being in the same dugout of more than five other people. And going through this different, obviously, the, every city that you're in, every community that you're in had different rules. And this made it really hard for customers to understand. So it was extremely challenging. Uh, numbers were down to next to nothing for a while. Um, and then even when things came back in year two, even if you as an individual were like, you know what, I, I'm good. I want to get outside. I don't care. Well, if your 10 friends who played on your kickball team didn't feel the same way, well, do you have a team? And uh, fortunately, because we do encourage individuals to register or small groups, you don't have to have a full team. You can be, you're by yourself, you can be two or three, which is great, obviously, for new people in town. But also in this situation turned out key because the number of individuals playing rose significantly because it was just a bunch of small groups that were all comfortable being outside. Uh, still was a small fraction of where we once were, uh, but it just proved even in those moments where there was risk involved and you didn't know what long-term could happen, people still were dying for human interaction and would go outside because it was that important to have that, uh, that, that just that release uh, to, to be in front of and around other people. Sure. As a business that directly and indirectly serves our tech community, what are some of the challenges you think Austin faces as we continue to grow? Is there any thoughts about, you know, when you look at Austin versus some of these other cities that you're in, you know, when you think of where we are now as a community and where we're going in the future, anything we're doing well, any challenges that you see for the greater tech community? Uh, certainly. I, I feel the challenge really comes back to the same thing is that we're, we're so focused on uh, individual uh, results uh, for the company wide that we kind of forget about the individual themselves. Um, whether we're in a cubicle, with a hundred others, or we're working in a hybrid environment, uh, we don't get the um, interaction that we really need uh, to really have that buy-in and say, this company is a great one to work for. Uh, taking care of your employees is something that is uh, crucial and important for us and really is, I'm sure, for every, any executive that you could ask, uh, but we don't always know how to do it. And again, pushing that cart through the office at five o'clock and just having a, a beer run that, that could be cool uh, one or two times, but after o overall, is that going to say, I mean, this company's awesome. This is where I want to stay and work the next X number of years. And I, I don't believe it is. It's uh, there's a lot of talent out there, e even as we move into a potential recession where uh, it's harder to even 
keep a job and there's a lot of people that are in the workforce that are looking for something, uh, you know who your A players are, who you want to keep around. So it involves more than just uh, giving them more money and giving them more uh, vacation time or so forth. You've got to take care of them, make sure that they're actually having the right work-life balance. This is providing that right work-life balance for everybody in the tech community. Nice. So I ask everyone who comes on the show, my personal belief is that community, collaboration, and conversations can solve all problems. So when I say those three words to you, and they're all important, community, collaboration, conversations, which one resonates the most with you and why, Mark? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. Uh, I would have to say collaboration, uh, as very few sports can be won or lost by a single person. Uh, it doesn't matter what the, uh, the sport or event might be. Um, sure, there are the tennis or golfs of the world, but most things require teamwork. And we learn at a very young age, or a lot of us do through sport, about how to win and lose. It's not what mom and dad said. It's about, uh, it doesn't matter how many goals I scored today. They scored more and we lost. And you learn to deal with that. Um, it, it's just as important as adults. Uh, we don't always get the results we want based on how good we are or how good we think we are that it takes others and working together on the field is just a, a good reminder of uh, just an important lesson in life is that I can't do this all by myself. I need the right supporting cast around me and uh, sports wouldn't exist without it. So the last question that I then ask everybody is let's say that one of your friends from Baltimore, somebody you grew up with, somebody went to college, they're coming to Austin for the first time. They've never been here. You've lived here 19 years. Where do you take them? Either a restaurant, an attraction, uh, an area. Where do you take them to show them the cool vibe of Austin? Uh, th that answer for me personally hasn't changed in years, which is always going to be uh, around Zucker Park. Uh, we're running sports on one end. There's runners on the, on the, bike, the hike and bike trail all the time. The vibe just being down there in the middle of the city and seeing downtown skyline uh, cannot be beat. And that's really what I believe uh, a lot of us see and we're like, that's what I want to be a part of. And those are resources that everybody's using uh, quite often. Um, and that is really what it kind of defines, uh, you know, even if you've been out of that scene for 10, 20 plus years, go down there for a walk one day. And I bet the energy level really comes back. And that's kind of how I feel even being here for 20 years and not being in the central urban core anymore. But you go back and it's just like it comes back to you pretty quick and it feels like this is really home. Nice. So any last words for the tech community, Mark? Uh, get outside and play. Uh, that, that's really it. Whether it be a company event that you guys are going to go out and do, or if it's just yourself and I just need something else because you know what? I just moved here or I don't have a really great network or my friends are off getting married or having kids. Well, guess what? You're never too old to be able to start over again. Um, our job again, to be the, to be the best part of your day. And sometimes that means you coming out and taking the chance and being with 10 other individuals who sign up the same way that you did and saying, you know what, let's see what happens. Uh, but odds are you'll find something that works for you and you'll stick with it. And, uh, and really the experience will be well worth it. Awesome. So if somebody wants to find out more about Austin sports and social club, how do they find it? Uh, easiest way, Austin uh, on our website, we'll have pretty much everything. Some cool videos to be able to see as well. Uh, and if this isn't your thing anymore, you've got young kids, Austin SSC kids is just a great way to get little ones out there playing soccer from the age of two and up. Wow. So we run clinics and leagues and everything so that we can pretty much get, uh, from the earliest parts of our life to, to through adulthood, uh, to show the importance and the significance, uh, and the fun in social sports. Nice. Oh, I loved it. Mark, you're a good friend of mine. I appreciate you, but thank you for coming on the show and sharing what you guys are doing both for the whole community, but also with the tech community and the tech companies that are here that you work with. This was a lot of fun to talk to you. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate it. Hey, and thank you to everybody who tuned in and listened. You know what? If it wasn't for you listening to the shows, why would we do these interviews? Every single week, we're looking for people who are touching the tech community in some way and adding value. So if you know somebody who should be a guest on Austin Tech Connect, make sure you reach out and let us know. And is your company a member of of the Austin Technology Council. You know, we're trying to do a lot of new things, both in the area of education, community building, advocacy, and we can't do it without you. We need the civic-minded leaders in the tech companies in Austin to support the causes that we're trying to do. We need your voice as we look to the future. So make sure that your company is supporting the Austin Technology Council, and you could join today. Thanks for listening to the Austin Tech Connect podcast. 
make sure your company is a member of the Austin Technology Council and add your voice to the future of our tech ecosystem in Central Texas.